Hello everybody and welcome to the second video of the chapter Rulers and Buildings from Grade 7. What are we going to discuss particularly in, the, in this video? Well, I have already given you an insight. I have already given you an in-depth idea about the themes that we are going to, that we are going to look at into the um, future videos, right? So this particular video will focus about the engineering skills, okay, that were behind uh, constructing these monuments. Well, why is it so important to study these monuments? Right. See, understand, we have this entire chapter is about the medieval history and the construction that has taken place during that time. <clears throat> now, it wasn't just that a king woke up one morning or the sultan woke up one beautiful morning and said that, oh, go build a monument in my reverence or in my regards. Go do it. And then the people, the poor workers, they just got into it and put bricks on each other and a monument was creating. No, definitely not. Those, the construction of those monuments actually required a lot of engineering skills because today they are, they are the living monuments, they are the living examples of the grandeur of that particular era. So let's take an example on, uh, I mean, just to, I'll just give you an example of the roof structures, right? If you look into your textbooks, you will see the roof structures, the arches that are created. I mean, they were not only um, restricted towards the gateways of the monuments. No, they were, even we find arches, okay, the those beautiful arches on the windows and the doors, right? So now when we look at arches, arches were built, I mean, that required a very special engineering skill. And they were built on roofs, doors, windows, wherever they could put that structure, they have gone and they have constructed now that. So now when we look at, there are two, uh, there were two types of engineering techniques that were very, very famous and very prevalent in the, in those days, in the, especially during the medieval time. The first one is the trabiat or the corbel technique. Okay, which was used by the very early sultans, the Delhi sultans, and then comes the arcuate technique. So when we look at the first one, that's a uh, trabiate uh, technique, we see that this technique was used on the roofs, doors, and windows where it was made by placing horizontal beams on two vertical columns. And that trabiate uh, style was used from 8th to 18th, uh, 13th century. And this was the first uh, technique that has come into place. Well, when we look at arcuate technique, this has come up uh, during 12th and 13th century, and then this was very famous. Under this style of construction, there were two new technologies that have come, and the new stylist development, which was very noticeable from the 12th century. So those started in the 12th century, uh, for one century, they still went with the turbid, I mean, the corbel uh, technique, because they were very, now, with this time, by this time, they were very used to, to make monuments using corbel technique. Uh, so, kids, let me just show you how this tribute uh, technique work, which we, uh, which we see in Kuatul Islam Mosque. Now, these are the two vertic uh, vertical columns, and then on these two vertical columns, we find, uh, we find the horizontal arrangement of the bricks. Uh, do please bear with me because I am little bad with uh, create, I mean, drawing always been, had always been my poor area. Right, right. So something like this was some arrangements that they used to do. And then over this, okay, like this. So now, like imagine, imagine, just imagine that if a person is standing over here, how it looks. Wow, at first, ah, it's a wonder to see. But then we could, I mean, let's get into a little more of physics. This, this particular thing shows that there is a lot of pressure over these uh, vertical beams, isn't it? A lot of pressure that we see on this monument. And then we have seen in Kuwait al-Islam mosque that it did not withstand the test of time, right? Now, whatever we see is actually preserved as a heritage. 
right because yes it was built during the early uh, delhi sultans so that is just a preservation of what they had created but then this particular structure that we see did not uh, survive the test of time uh so and now showing you how the arcuate technique works see i mean the basic idea is the same that two vertical uh, two vertical columns are the two vertical columns or the two vertical beams are standing and then these guys they started to arrange the stones in a little different manner like something like this okay as we have already seen in the theory that they had a concept of keystone right so it was more like arranging it like this right and get a structure ready so this this particular thing is the keystone over here and then what you see over here over here the mixture of the limestone and the small stones and this was put so that it it stays together it survives the test of time and then if you stand over here come on we as the admirers we are sure that it won't come down on your head right because the weight is very accurately distributed these beams are not holding the entire structure the structure the superstructure itself is holding and then the keystone just fits in right it fits in it gets jammed it gets fixed over there so this was the arcuate uh, technique and yes i mean the windows the doors wherever there was the uh, do i mean the arc shape had to be given then they followed this technique and it has it has uh, uh, stood the test of time now over here also we need to understand that this was called as the true arc okay this was actually the true arc what was there which have survived over the period of time now let us understand why the arcuate technique was so famous well the arcuate technique as i said that they have found two new technologies so the very first thing was the weight of the superstructure as you have seen in the previous video how the arrangement was done and how the keystone was fixed in the center so the weight of the super superstructure about the doors or and the windows was sometimes uh, carried by the entire arcs arches and then the limestone cement was increasingly used in those uh, constructions now why these limestone i mean you could say that they have got the telesma here they have got the main idea there now this particular limestone cement this was a very high quality cement which when mixed with stone chips the small stone chips hardened into concrete and this made the constructions of large structures easy and faster now this is the image that is taken from the textbook i mean i just wanted you to have a pretty big look of the image now this is the image taken i mean this is a painting from akbarnama okay that was showing the construction of the water gate at the agra fort i mean if you look at this this is the arch right the true arch that we are talking and see here they are mixing the limestone the limestone uh, cement uh, with the stone chips and creating the hardened uh, concrete moving on i just want you to here analyze take a minute or so and analyze these images right ah oh, there i'm there in the center now analyze these images this is the screed uh, of the quwwat al islam mosque in delhi which was uh, built uh, using the corbel technique right see this is the structure how the horizon how the vertical uh, uh, columns are created you see this and then how the horizontal beam is arranged over this and then this is how the arch was created and then if you look at the true arch okay that was uh, that is still there in the alai darwaza of the same uh, quwwat al islam uh, mosque now if you look at this particular structure over here if you see this structure has the arcuate technique now this is the cornerstone that i was talking about this is the cornerstone that uh, that that all fixed and here over here we see the uh, limestone that was used to fix them well so 
this is just a uh, very short video because this topic is not very elaborated in your textbook but then it gives you a very beautiful idea about the two techniques which developed during the uh, Delhi Sultan times and which was used to make the arches and I mean those structures if you see the Islamic monuments the Islamic monuments most of them okay most of them had the structures this this uh, similar to these structures on their doors windows jhalas and this ro jharokhas they call it and also at the gateways like this so here my dear students I end this video with these two techniques Okay, the corbel technique, which was developed in the eighth, uh, eighth to thirteenth century, and the uh, arquet technique, which was developed during the twelfth century. Happy learning! Take care.